Thank you for joining us for the latest episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. Sam, it was only a week ago that we were together and so much has happened in the world of football in the last week. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, it's the usual Premier League, isn't it? That's why it's so popular because uh, results have popped up that was unexpected again. And I think that uh, certainly at the top at the top of the division, top of the Premier League, it was a... It was a shock and, um, and, and of course, it's good for de- debating today. And I think that um, even, even last night, I thought we were going to sit here with uh, Leeds beating Man United, but uh, Man United did well in the end getting a draw out of it. Yeah, football keeps us on our toes it all does. the time. Would you like to introduce our guest for this week? Well, I'm going to call him a legend because he, I always, he'll be slightly embarrassed about that, but I, I certainly, think, <laughs> <laughs> certainly think it's true. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted to... Uh, to say Robbie's Robbie Fowler joined us for this uh, this podcast and uh, it's great to see him again because last time I saw him was on the uh, on the suicide uh, situation, wasn't it? With yeah, uh, no, we were obviously campaigned campaign with the LMA. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was wow. very good. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining My us today. My pleasure. Thank, thanks um, for having Robbie me. Robbie Fowler is here. So, um, how are you? What, what are you up to? How is life? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, my life is really good. Um, I... I'm trying to get back into football. I've been I've been a manager the last couple of years. Uh, well, last couple of years I've been trying to get back in. The last couple of years I've been here, there, and everywhere. I've done my I've done my my part overseas. Now, obviously, looking for something maybe in, in, on these shows. So, um, you know, it's probably one of the reasons I'm here. Actually, I can probably uh, pick, pick <laughs> Sam's brain as well. So, well, do you know there's a good luck charm coming on this show and picking Sam's brain? I think because we had Big Dunk on um, a couple of months ago, and obviously now he's um, oh, yeah. taking he's, up his first job at Forest Green. Yeah. So, Sam's dishing out well, good I, advice. I, I, well, I'm, I'm open a little bit of Sam rubs off on me. Actually, that's, I'll be happy with that. <laughs> so, what would be your ideal, or what would you be hoping for to start with as, as a managerial job? What sort of level would you go in? Sort of Forest Green level, like Big Dunk had, or I, of course, yeah. Look, I, I think it, it's it's a case of never say never going anywhere. Um, you know, I, I have done my apprenticeship. If you like, I've, I've been you know been in Thailand, I've been in India, I've been in Australia. You know, and I've been relatively successful. Um, and it's coming over here, so I'd like to think I, I've shown people that you know I'm prepared to you know for the challenge. You know, with all due respect, I wouldn't just do it for the sake of it because um, I think you've got to go in there and you've, you've got to give yourself a chance. If you're going in there, and, and Sam will know, um, if you're going to a club who've got no ambition and and this word is probably used too much, a project. If, if no club has got a project, then and you know they're happy going from week to week, then I, I just think it's pointless. So, of course, I think, yeah, I know I'll probably need to go lower leagues. You know, I'm not naive enough to uh, to think that will that will never be the case, but I've done the yard yards already. So, you know, why wouldn't I do it again? Or certainly on, on, in these uh, in these parts. Sam, would you have any advice for, for Robbie or for any, I think, like, inspiring I, anybody, I think that I think that um, the opportunity you just have to take and... Um, and you, you you can't be too fussy when you want that you want that job, you know. I just I remember when I was at Preston as you team coach, and uh, Blackpool decided to interview me after after eight other choices had turned the job down. And uh, I sat in the boardroom at Blackpool um, with Owen Oyston and 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 the uh, not not so great board, but okay which you find out about. And uh, they said uh, all this and all I said was, I can start tomorrow. And that threw them, that threw them into shock so much because they had so much so much of the, the, the other managers turning them down who demanded this and demanded that. I just looked at what they had and looked at what they said and I just went, yeah, all right, I'll do that. And uh, I'll start tomorrow. No contract. And, um, and and just just went from there. I felt like if if you get into that job first, if you demand too much in the beginning, especially when you're, you're starting off, then you. But when you get in, you're the manager. You're you're the one who can actually talk yeah. about the changes you want to make because because you're saying that these lads don't work my way, or I've got somebody who can work better, and they're more susceptible to change then rather than demand it before you get. So, mm. you know, it, and, and everywhere is different, and, it, and 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 everybody, you know, has a different outlook. I mean, today, it will be all about the football you play. 
you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, this podcast called No Tippy Tappy Football because it's over overran the entire nation in terms of even watching the FA Cup matches with teams in the lower league playing it out from the back, losing it, playing out from the back, losing it, and playing out from the back and losing it. So uh, it carries on. It's carried on down all all the way, all down the leagues. And if, if I'm Pep or Jurgen Klopp, I'll be playing out from the back because I can. Cause you've got, you've got the players. You've got I've the got players. the players. If, if I'm, you know... You know, like beat Dunk at Forest Lee, bottom of the league. <laughs> I wouldn't be playing out from the back. And an old manager taught me many years ago, John McGrath, like you mean, and said, like, well, what do you do when you throw it out to the fullback, Sam? And it goes out for a, a throw in under his foot. And the goalie picks it up again and throws it to your fullback, and then he puts it down, and it goes under his foot and goes out to the throw it. Do you keep throwing it to your fullback? Simple analogy. No, yeah. you get him up the pitch and you. You well, knock well, it that's in the a right sign of insanity, isn't it? Doing the same thing over, so over and over again. But this is the way it's going, yeah. Robbie. I mean, it's a, it's a constant, it's a constant breed of. Even if you lose it, it's okay. Yeah, and it's not. It's the basics of of that have gone to pot. There's nothing wrong with playing out from the back when it's right. There's nothing wrong at all with that. But why play out from the back? I've said this many times. Why play out from the back with a team who presses high and the best pressers in the league? Because you're gonna you're gonna lose it, and that, that and, and and that's I think, my. I think you've nailed it there. I think it, it, there's obviously certain ways of playing football, there's certain formations. You know, if you move one player at you know ten yards, a formation changes uh, how you play the game. I mean, you've had this stigma for oh, yeah. you know, for as long as I've you know yeah. I've known football. To be fair, you know Sam plays a long ball, and you know what? Sometimes it's okay because it's the Absolutely. right ball the right and ball, yeah. you, you, what you're saying is spot on you know it's also the courses you know if you keep doing the same thing with the same plays you can't maybe do it then that, that's a problem so you have got to be um, I think you've got to be you know open to change you know I, I am open to change uh, and just to go back to what you originally said Sam um, I'm ready tomorrow as well and you know, tomorrow you ask me, I'm going to be ready tomorrow as well. Yeah. We look forward to you getting your first job in the UK. We'll take me some, too. We'll take some credit. Too, yeah, Sam, we will, yes, yeah. We'll, we'll say no to the football help, Robbie. <laughs> um, but we have to do now our, what is becoming our weekly thing, to be honest, Robbie, where I ask Sam about the available jobs in the Premier League and in the EFL and see if he's interested in them. This happens every <laughs> single week now. So there's two jobs up just now, Sam, that I'm wondering what your take on them is. Um, obviously, Robbie's former club leads, managerless at the minute. Would you take that one? Would you fancy that one? Have you? Are you up for well, it? Well, I thought you? I just thought by now, if they were interested in me, and I always say, are you, are you interested in Sam Allardyce? And you know where I am, and I, and and so call me. And of course, if somebody called me, I wouldn't turn down going and chatting away with them. Certainly not at Leeds United, but there has been no call. So before anybody starts any speculation on this podcast, no, nobody's called me from uh, from Ellen Road to. Uh, to consider or talk about the job, the job in hand. So, you know, I, w- I watched them last night against Manchester United, and and I, I my point of view, I, you know, I wouldn't see a problem sorting them out from my point of view and my yeah. experience. But, you know, they are they are or we are always looking at I think foreign coaches more than British coaches. Um, we're lucky to have added one to the Premier League last week, which was Sean. One of only three now. Really? Three? Yeah, yeah. So it's very difficult for for us as as, as um, British uh, British coaches to or British managers to get it, to get a Premier League position now. Very very difficult. So uh, um, you, you just have to keep going. If you're if you're out there, you have to keep proving yourself, and hopefully one day you can you either make it to the top by getting the team promoted, which is most of the ways. British coaches get there, or uh, you know, or somebody sees what you're doing down there and and comes and te- comes and takes you, like you mean. But uh, but it 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 shows you the competition that you have to face because this is the best league in the world by the Premier League, best league in the world by a million miles, and that's why everybody everybody wants to come and work here. For me, without sounding too big headed or arrogant, I need to pick the right job for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm lucky to be in that position. But as Robbie at the moment takes yeah. a job when he comes, like Dunk, he got frustrated and thought that, well, he was very close to Middlesbrough, I think very close to Blackburn, very, you know, mm-hmm. but 
all of a sudden, you know, he's thinking, well, he's the one because you soon forgotten. Yeah. You know, in this in this game, you you quickly forgotten. But but once you uh, start um, getting on the on the bottom rung of the ladder, then you it's up to you. Then it's up to your your skill, your ability, your your uh, application to motivate all the people around you. It's your responsibility, and uh, and then if you can do that, you can always make players better when you take over. But if they're not quite good enough, it won't last forever. Yeah. And then you've got to do ruthless changes, both behind the scenes and on the pitch, if you think you need to. Well, I'd be very happy for you to get a job that you want one day, but I'll be very sad as well because it'll mean no more no tippy tappy football. Which is why every time there's a job <laughs> well, that comes quite, up, I think well, it's I mean, time particularly, to get this one. <laughs> particularly since we started with the World Cup, it's been. It's, I mean, it, I always think this is a great place to be when I come when I come here. Like I mean, it's like. We'll come to the studio. We're we'll, we'll, we'll relaxed, isn't it? Like we're actually at this, this bar. It's not a studio, is it? It's, it's, like, it's like therapy. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, is. I mean, it is. We can we sit, like that. sit and chat away forever. And then I think that, uh, you know, it's a great it's a great opportunity just to express what, what you think without anybody else editing it. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. It's how I feel. It's how Robbie feels now. And uh, nobody can go and take an headline out of yeah. it and make it into something that it's not. Yeah, great. And that's that's why we love it. That's why we love having. But, but I think so, if yes. he does get a job, I still think he can do it because there's going to be maybe an hour or two where you m- maybe can huh? you can get a, you can get back in some. Okay. Well, probably I'll have to get past Mrs. Mrs. Allardyce for that. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of there's lots of nice places in the world to visit. Like I mean, you know, you're not living on your own again. Are you? you know what I mean? You got to understand how they how they suffer. Yeah. You know, and I think that. Uh, uh, it took me a long time to, not a long time, took me a while, but because there was so much focus on me being a manager, it was like, what are they going through? You know what yeah. I mean? What are they doing? We often don't uh, think about the families, it, it, yeah. It, well, it's just too in, in, in all-consuming mm-hmm. when when you're doing the job, you know. But uh, it, it, with, without that patience and that, you know, that love and care from your family, and particularly your wife, then it's very difficult to succeed. Now, there's a lot that's happened in the Premier League over this last week, and I'd love to get your take, both your takes on on a few of the things that have been happening. We cannot possibly talk about football this week without talking about the allegations that Manchester City are facing from the Premier League. Over 100 alleged breaches, um, of, of mainly focusing around FFP and financial dealings and things. So, Sam, what was your initial thoughts when you... this? I mean, because it fairly pretty much came out of the blue on Monday morning. I'm not surprised because I think that uh, they'll have been looking into it since they got they got uh, the last oh, they won the last appeal when it was the irregularities yeah. on the Champions League, wasn't it? UEFA, yeah, yeah, UEFA, and uh, they overcame that, like which then would trigger the FA to then start their investigation, and their investigation has now come up with the fact that they think they've got enough now to. To charge Manchester City, so I, I am not surprised that the FA are not are doing it, uh, doing what they're doing, um, and uh, and I just hope that um, that f- from my point of view, uh, Manchester City haven't done it because there's n- there's nothing worse than the the bad publicity it's going to bring to uh, obviously particularly Man City, but the the Premier League in general, like you mean. So I think that. Um, it's a great shame it pops up in the middle of a season again, and to, and and it's all headlines instead of what we instead of the beauty of the game, and and the the, the entertainment value that um, Manchester City bring us. Of course, the jealousy is unfounded, like because it's always there, and of course all the others will be rubbing their hands saying, "Yeah, find them guilty," as you've read mm-hmm. in the press now. Most of Seems like the owners or the chief execs have expressed an opinion that they want Man City kicked out of the league, which is, you know, not the right thing to do. It, it, well, I don't know what the right thing to do is if they're found guilty, but but I think it, I just hope it's not. It, it, they can prove it to, to be the other the other side and and come out on top. And um, and, and I've always I've always had the <laughs> people are scoffing. I've always had the uh, opinion that. If I if I want to invest my money, you know, 
my hard-earned money mm. in the businesses that I do, why would you restrict me? Mm. There's definitely an interesting debate between what Manchester City have been accused of doing and the the feeling around the actual rules, that the, the FFP rules and, and whether they're fit for purpose and ever have been. But I have no. to say, Sam, it's really refreshing to hear you because for me as a Manchester City fan, which everybody knows that I am, it feels like we've already been trialled in the, port, the court of public Ooh, opinion. We're and never, you're never innocent until proven guilty in this country. <laughs> and I can, I can vouch for that on what I've been through. I can tell you that now. So I just think that I've always been the opinion that it never, it never happened before until a few years ago. Um, and it was, football's always been unfair f f from the fact that if you've got more fans, you've got more money to spend yeah. through the gate, which is when I played, you know, like in, in, you know, when I played, it was like the, one, the ones who had the most money was the ones who had the most fans and they made the most money so they could invest that money into the, into the club. And then they had a local business owner who put money into the club. And I, and I still go back to, well, football is a business now. But football is a, only a thriving business if it allows investment. So if you can't invest in the business, you can't improve the business. And you normally you, you go to the banks. Mm -hmm. If you're going to start your business, you do a business plan, you go to the bank. The bank looks at what you're doing, thinks of when, looks at your figures, says, I'll lend you this for that much interest. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're not the most, they're not the cleanest in the world, are they? We've proven over many years. So I'm an owner. I'm worth billions of pounds. What can I do with this billions of pounds? I'll buy a football club because I like, I like the Premier League. I like, I like what it brings. I like the, the fact that I can use it as for all my businesses as, uh, and I want to invest X amount of millions of pounds in it. And then all of a sudden you go, no, you can't. Yeah. As long as it's it's the right money, you know, then I, 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 I can't what, understand I, I mean, it. I mean, I agree it, with that. I just Sam, can't understand it. I, I mean, I totally agree with that. I mean, you are spot on. If it's your money in your club, you should mm. be entitled to do. But the rules are there in place. So, you know, if you do break the rules, then mm. there's got to be some sort of... There's got to be Come some, back, yes, yeah, of course, I, yeah, I, I, I agree I think that's with that. The problem, Robbie, yeah, yeah. and I think with Manchester City, um, I mean, regardless of what people think, I really enjoyed my time. Manchester. I thought it was a great club. Obviously, it's gone up in in different stages now. It's uh, totally different to what it was. I think they've had problems in the past where they've been fine. Uh, they've, they've, whether they've, it's it's black you, and white, academy yeah, level, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and obviously they've all um, mm. they've spent money on on, on fines and in, in various. Yeah, yeah part and uh, re obviously recommendations of, of what other people have spoke about Man City you've got now people talking about the financial fair play and the rules are in place to try and help every every other club basically aren't they yes. uh, and it's 100, 100 and plus breaches you know and if they are deemed to be in the wrong you know and it, it is all allegedly at the minute and there's got to be some sort of implications what, um, what would be a fair implication if they are if they are found guilty what do you think well, I mean, without sounding horribly, if, if you find them, I don't think it matters because it's, it's a club we've got untold wealth anyway. So, yeah, I mean... From this season? Well, if they're found guilty now, yeah. Did, well, I mean... This, but it was not gonna, but it's, it's not, not going to be done now, is it? It's no, not going to be I mean, done and dusted now. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about the financial fair play and the regulations up to 2018, aren't they? Yeah. So I can guarantee when that's finished, it'll be from 2018 to now and then there'll be... There'll Another be, lot. There'll be some sort of, you know, people will be looking into to everything Man City have had over the last four or five years as well, because this this equates to before that. So uh, I think there is there's problems. You know, we we can obviously foresee problems. The shame about it is, I mean, I, I'm I love Pep. I think he's brilliant. Now, does it tarnish his? I mean, not not an ability as a manager, but the fact is that you know, if you're talking about clubs and you maybe getting titles, take them off them, getting trophies taken off them, does that tarnish his reputation? Does it tarnish the, the players' reputation who, who played? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it shouldn't do because obviously you're playing at that particular moment, but there's, there should be some sort of implication. Whether it's the, the I mean, you get into relegation. Now, where do you get relegated to? That's a problem. Um, whether it's a point deduction. Points deduction will, will that really hurt them? Depending on how many, because well, you think Man City yeah. could possibly go on on a run and, and win X amount of games anyway, and still it's, it's, and it's still be the top team. It's unforeseeable to think that they might end up like Rangers. Yeah, 
I know it's a different yeah. league and maybe the, the rules are differently, but it, if it's as if it's as bad as they say it is, it sounds a bit. It sounds like worse than Rangers, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, well, Rangers well, ended I mean, up down well, in I'm not sure back we, down in the bottom league and yeah. had to work the bait. Is well, that? Was that because Rangers actually folded, though, wasn't it? So Rangers, the new, yeah. the new. The new Rangers is, is an entirely yeah, yeah. different club, so you're assuming this won't happen that, yeah. with uh, with Man City. Yeah. Um, now, we'll, we'll, are we talking liquidation? Are we talking administration? I mean, there's obviously some what, what administration sorry, errors. Sorry, what, what would happen if this? If you sat as the owner of a uh, of Manchester City or, or a big conglomerate worldwide who own who own several football clubs across the world? My friend Mick Bennett runs or head of the academy in Australia mm -hmm. to find and bring and do young players. And the wealth they brought to that area, as you well know, you're a Man City mm -hmm. fan, and the fact that they've got other clubs all Around over the, the world, world to develop football and invest in it. What if they go, all right, see ya? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Do you know what I mean? What if they go, all right, we'll pull out then. Well, yeah. you've gone. They're yeah. now a self-sustaining model, though, they are. Well, that's what I mean. This summer, the... they made more money than they spent mm -hmm. in, in transfers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but I think that, like, if you if you upset them too much and you're tarnishing their reputation, because mm -hmm. they want to be seen as, as in what they're doing is the, as, is the right thing, do they say, well, we don't need desegregation anymore because it's about, yeah. it's about that much in their yeah. business. In their business models and the businesses yeah. they own. So, what if they said, well, you know, we'll pull out then? We hope you're enjoying watching No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. And don't forget, you need to subscribe to the Footy Accumulators YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Off the pitch, obviously, there's there's lots going on for Manchester City, but on the pitch, things don't seem completely right as well, Robbie. I'd love your thoughts as a striker on Erling Haaland this season. Um, what do you make of, of, of? I mean, obviously, he's absolutely phenomenal. What do you make of kind of people saying City played better without him? No. I mean, we're talking about one of the one of the world's greatest strikers, aren't we? Um, and there's no doubt he wasn't brought in to win the Premier League. He was brought in to maybe get you know a, a nil nil or a one one and, and change the fortunes in the Champions League. He was brought in to win that. Um, let's be honest, I mean, Manchester City over the last four or five years have averaged probably ninety odd points. They've scored over hundred goals, so I don't think he was the finish of answer in terms of winning the Premier League. Um, but saying that. I mean, I love watching him. Um, okay, he's probably not as proactive as a lot of the strikers, but I love the simplicity of, of what he does. You know, and I think you can't. I mean, you can't really teach people what he's got. I mean, he is an incredible player. Yeah. I mean, he... <laughs> just a minute. I've been talking about this for twenty odd years in coaching terms. Like when they come, come to coach. Is a light bulb? Honest, <laughs> honest to God, it's unbelievable the amount of times I've talked about this about all these coaches and managers. Saying that, yeah, I taught him how to run here and run there and do that and do this. And I've gone, no, you can't do that for a goal scorer. A goal scorer, he's got that natural. And we've talked about it yeah. before. And like you've just, you've just made my day, obviously. Because <laughs> now I've got it from the number one, one of the number one strikers in the Premier League, who oh. says. I was a natural goal scorer. Oh, no. I, I mean, I, I disagree with that, though. I, yeah, I, I disagree. With, I mean, I know where we're going and I know what you're saying. I think the fact is that, you know, certainly from an Earl and Darlan point of view, the fact is that he'd done so much training on his own. I know what you're saying in terms of coaches can't really do that, yeah. but the player himself will do so much work and so much work behind the scenes and so much training and the monotony of doing the, the same things over and over again. Like the repetition. Yeah, you know, well, it, we it becomes, all do that, becomes, don't we, to get better? Yeah, yeah I get it that, becomes yeah. a second nature. Yeah. And I think that's what probably, it's like the Messi one. You know, Messi goes on about, oh, you know, he's, he, he's brilliant, he's this. And he is, but people don't see the hours and hours and hours that, of practice that you put in to make it look natural. And I, I, I do get what you're saying in terms of coaches do this, yeah. do that. But what you're, what you're not saying is the, the, the hours and hours of, <coughs> of practice that the individual player puts in. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I know I did it all the time. So, you know, are you born? I think you're born with something, but you need something. And you've to developed hold it, it yourself yeah. on what of you've course. done and what you practiced. I get that. But, but I, I just think coaches take so much credit, so much credit that they shouldn't take. Oh, there, there is a lot of that, isn't you there? You know what I mean? Know that. <laughs> Obviously, they have to yeah. promote themselves to the job. Like, I mean, I've got this, like, you know, you know, I sorted this striker out, made him go there, made him go here, made him run there, made him run here. And I've always gone, 
No, that's not the case. I, I, <laughs> you, you know, I think obviously you practice. Yeah. Everybody all practice. Even I'm practicing my heading. I felt like I couldn't head a ball on Saturday as a defender. You know what I mean? I practice that, but I don't. There's, a, there's always been something about strikers for me on on the ones who who were who were clever enough in the brain. I think, I think that to is, elude yeah. the de defenders yeah. and the ones who aren't, and I'm not so sure that's coached. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. yeah. developed by repetition and practice and, and putting in long term memory. But I think that you know, I mean, he's only he's only 22. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's what I love about him. So the, the simplicity of what he does as a striker. And I think the game, when it is academy football now, I think we could probably sit here all day and talk about academy football formations, tactics, and, and, and obviously various elements of the way you know academies are run. But the, the maybe the modern strikers may be getting taken away from the, the, the game that we see because everyone wants to sort of come and get involved in, in the play. Whereas me growing up, I wanted to score goals and I only wanted to score goals. Whereas now, if you go to an academy, I mean, for some reason, there's there's an assist chart in the league and you think, oh. how long's that been in the game? And it, it sort Goal of takes... involvement. I hate Goal that too. I mean, yeah. it, it takes, it takes away the, the simple fact that as a striker, you know, you want to score goals, but sometimes strikers are happy now with playing deeper because they want to be an, ass, an assister. Uh, now, that, I think that's what we're, I'm leading to it in terms of Ireland. You know, don't get me wrong, he can, he can sort of drop, but... He very rarely does do that. I mean, he'll he'll drop it and then he'll sprint and he's got that incredible appetite and that incredible desire to get into the box. Whereas we don't really see that with with, with modern day strikers, do they? And I love that about him. Another player scoring lots of goals at the minute that I'd like to ask you about, Robbie. Um, and one of the my favourite things about your career, Leeds, City, Liverpool. You really couldn't annoy Man United fans <laughs> anymore <laughs> if you tried. And I really respect that. Um, but I'd love your thoughts just now on Marcus Rashford. Do you think, should he be Man United's out and out number nine now? Um, probably not. I, I don't get it right. He should be playing. Uh, in terms of, I think Manchester United as a club should be going out there and getting the very best because of what they um, what they want to be and what they want to aspire to be. I think we, we again, we talk about strikers and the strikers Manchester United have had over the years. I don't think they've got anyone what they've had, the likes of Andy Cole, even even Dwight York and, you know, Teddy. Teddy, yeah. You know, so they haven't really got that now. So I know, again, we talk about formations and tactics. Um, now, for me, I think, you know, to use a, a better a better phrase for you know, for Marcus Rashford is, you know, you play him on the sides anyway and, and obviously he comes in and he uses his pace. Uh, he uses, obviously, a little drop of a shoulder and, and, you know, and tucks inside. So I don't think he's your... Again, we, I don't think he's your architectural number nine. I don't, I don't think he should be the focal point of any Manchester United attack. He should be playing because his form at the minute is, is exceptional. It really is. Um, I think you can see sometimes in his game and the way he is, he, he can sulk a little bit when things don't go his way, whether it's you know the manager playing him out of position or whether he's not getting involved in the game. Um, again, that's that's modern football and modern players. Uh, but I don't think he's your architectural number nine, you know, I in Ireland or uh, you know, Aguero at City uh, or or even you know Coley at um, you know Manchester United, but. He is playing unbelievably well at the minute, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. It's annoying. He really is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being impartial. <laughs> I'm never, Sam. Right, while you're here, we'd love to ask you for your top five Premier League okay. strikers of all time. Feel free to chip in as well, Sam. Oh, no, so, I'll leave that to Robert. <laughs> better qualified them than me. From five and to one. Feel free to include yourself. Do you know? Don't be shy. I mean, look. I, to be fair, I would pick myself because you know, He'd pick himself yeah. as number one. Yeah, yeah of, <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> I, well, I mean, look. I, I mean, you've just mentioned obviously five plays and I mean I won't give you them in any particular order I'll mention five strikers who I think should be up there and I th again we, we could probably sit here and talk about strikers all day but I think for me I think Shearer is I mean the, the goals and you know the, the type of player he was um, you know even he had injuries as well let, let's not forget I mean he was he was an incredible player I think any any Premier League um, any Premier League striker now, I mean, you've you've got. I'm trying to obviously Harry Kane. Harry Kane, he, he's fitting into the top five. I mean, you, you're probably putting Thierry Henry for obvious reasons. Um, I, I would have did uh, Didier Drogba. Yeah. I thought Didier Drogba was a phenomenal. A <coughs> forward. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have mentioned. So you've Forda, got Shearer, Drogba, Shearer, Drogba, Kane. Kane. 
Uh, and you know what, Rooney, you've got to have Rooney as well. Rooney, I mean, again, wow. young lad, yeah. uh, young lad, you know, going from Manchester United, um, you know, playing in, in, a, in a pressure environment over the years. And I think that this is probably what the thing for being a striker, you know, all the good players that I've mentioned, they've all played in pressure environments. And I, I think that's sort of what makes you as a player as well. Uh, I think you have spells where, you know, players can score goals, but you don't have the, the maybe the, the longevity of, of maybe some of the others. Uh, but the strikers who, who I've mentioned there, you know, you've got Rooney, you've got uh, Kane, you've got Shearer, Drogba. Uh, who else did I say? Um, Henri. 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 You didn't put Sergio Aguero in, I know. Is. Yeah, I, I, you know what? And, and we it, there's an argument for everything. Uh, I mean, I, I think he was a phenomenal player. I really did. Um, I mean, can we have top four and, and like a joint five? Because, I mean, <laughs> there could be, there could be so many. <laughs> there could be so many. What I, I mean, like about that choice is, is the longevity of those goal scorers. Yeah, it's not just a, a, a case of one or two seasons. It's like, you know, over the period of time, it's like you know, six, seven, eight years. Yeah, maybe e even more. Like you mean, so you know, you, you you've got them come and you got them. They can they can come and they can go and they can do and then they go elsewhere. But these these players stayed at the football clubs for yeah. for a long time. Van Nistelrooy. Yeah, like again, yeah. quality. You know I mean, I mean you know, it, it's. You know. Sam, Sam Jen, I mean, you know, because you've, you've been obviously involved in the game for a long time. You've seen players, you know, left, right and centre. I mean, you, you could probably sit here all day and talk about all the great strikers. I mean, I've not, I've not, I've well. not mentioned Andy Cole. I've not yeah. mentioned Ian Wright. I've not mentioned Bearcamp. You know, and, and there's loads, loads of players to choose from. I mean, I've not even spoke about myself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, we could be we we all there. day talking about players, but I think yeah. we'll go all Michael week talking Owen. about myself. didn't Michael, stay here yeah. long enough, like, you mean, but I... I Personally, I worked with this guy and uh, at Nicholas and Elka, and I, wow, yeah, you know, phenomenal. Is he the best striker you've worked with? Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, is the I best goals. He was the best striker and goal scorer. And the next one who was pure goal scorer was uh, Jermaine Defoe. You know, a lot of goals. But, you know, so it, it's funny you just you just asked him then about um, the best striker he's worked with now. I nearly worked with Sam, so I don't know I'd have, I'd have maybe fall, fallen into that category. I don't, I don't, do you know the full story with what happened to myself at, no, at Blackburn? It's brilliant, actually, because it's not brilliant for me, but I did through the grapevine. I mean, obviously, when Sam took over at Blackburn, Paul Ince had been sacked and you, yeah. took, you took over. And our Ince took me in from, I was at Cardiff, um, and Ince gave us a, a, like a pay-as-you-play contract. And I was probably coming towards the end of my career. I, I maybe couldn't play two, three games, so we couldn't do it. My body was, was gone. But I'd like to think I was still okay. So I went to City. I uh, went to, obviously, um, uh, to Blackburn. I, I played three games. I played against uh, Everton, played against Manchester United, I played against Bolton. Got man out of match against Bolton. Um, I think. Well, we, I don't know any of this. Yeah, no, no. but I'm going to tell you, Sam, and it'll be interesting to see what you say. So wow. when, um, when obviously, you came in, and he got sacked, you came in, I actually just didn't turn up because... I knew that the chair, the chairman wasn't a big fan of me anyway. So I knew that he was, he was John. Maybe, John, yeah. So right. I knew that he he probably wanted me gone. But and and you can you can either write this or wrong it. But I'd actually heard that you didn't like me. So I, no. I yeah, and I I mean, who said that then? I, th I think it was uh, I think it was my dad actually who told me, <laughs> and, and he he heard it he heard uh -huh. it from someone. Um, <gasps> now I went, well, it's pointless me going. And the chairman doesn't like me, and the manager doesn't like me. So you know it's not worth going in so actually when Sam took over I just actually basically tore up my contract so you know I, I might have I might have played under you Sam I might have enjoyed would have, it would you have played under you Sam? yeah he would have played under me rather, yeah. well there's no problem about it about somebody who's here <laughs> I'm a master at if they've got a pay to play contract then it's 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 a cheap footballer yeah. with a great reputation like can he come on the sub and score a goal can he you know you can't you can't you can't. You don't lose. You don't lose what you've got. All you all you lose is your capacity to get in the right areas again when yeah. your legs slow down. Your brain doesn't. Your brain always. Your brain actually gets better as you get older. Uh, but but obviously, every footballer stops just because the legs don't go anymore. That's the only reason they stop. Like I mean, but you know the impact he could have had coming on a sub. And I think we had um, uh, Jason Roberts and. Benny McCarthy, yeah, and 
it was a Costa Rica, Costa Rica, who's yeah, Rocky Santa, Rocky Santa Rocky, Cruz. He, he's a good player, actually, Rocky Santa. Him, yeah. You know what I mean? Came to see. So I don't know. I can't think back that far. If you if you just didn't turn up, I'd have been had too much going on. and yeah. Just got on with no, it. I just that was it. Got so I, I just heard that he didn't like me. Not no, not as a, as a person, but just no. didn't like me as a player. No, but I mean, I mean, you know, Carl. Carl loved you, and I kept Carl on. Yeah. I didn't want to lose Carl. That's a bit of a schoolboy out of by myself, wasn't it? You know what I mean? It's a lesson yeah. for all the kids. Carl, yeah. Carl and uh, Bruni. Yeah. Kept both of them on. Who were they, Sam? They're two coaches, coaches. like I mean. Carl's Carl's at Oxford now. Should be should be a top man. It should yeah, be in my opinion. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. You know what I mean? Very, very good indeed. Um, you know, but he's stuck the at Oxford in the in the lower end of the league and never never had the chance to move move higher up so oh well I loved that thank you Robbie yeah, yeah that so that's an interesting that. story yes I knew I, I knew, you, I knew you, were, you were there but I knew and then you weren't there so you yeah were. I mean what what I like about this Sam you haven't really answered have you so you either like me or you don't I do like you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes you he likes you yeah he Sam likes Robbie yeah, makes, me, makes me feel worse now don't <laughs> Now, of course, um, a group of fans that do love you, of course, is the Liverpool fans. You're still Liverpool's all-time leading goal scorer. Yeah. Although I hear that Mo Salah is 10. He's, he's close in, close in. Are you happy he's having a bad season? <sighs> from an individual point of view, yes. <laughs> delighted. Uh, but from a Liverpool fan point of view, no. Because I think, um, I mean, records are there, certainly to be broken. Uh, obviously get a little bit serious here. Um, I want them to be because I want my my team to win. I want them to be successful. I want the players to sort of win everything. Uh, but yeah, from a, an individual selfish selfish point of view, I, I want them gone in the summer. <laughs> Before he gets <laughs> yeah, to your record, yeah. yes, no, I, the summer it's win, just it's gone. Win-win for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the summer just gone. I want them gone just because I didn't want them to beat my record. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to him this season? Whether it's him, whether, I don't whether it's him, whether it's a team. Um, I mean, there's obviously a few little problems, um, you know, happening within a club. You know, they, they can't, they, they can't buy wins, they can't you know, buy performances. Uh, they are really struggling. Um, Two I mean, lads haven't paid off though, have they? No, no, and, and I agree front, with that. So I, the I, front I, line, yeah. yeah Do you know what I mean? Obviously, Gakpo and, and, and uh, Nunes, Nunes. Uh, Darwin, are look, good players, and I think what. I think what we fundamentally need to remember, I think when, when Liverpool have signed players in the past, they've more or less been in the Premier League and, you know, you're talking about the likes of, I don't know, I mean, Mane, for example, Van Dijk, you know, Salah, who, Salah they, they played in the Premier League, obviously they, yeah. they, they, Salah had gone elsewhere and came back over, came but, back. Um, but with them, they didn't really have a, a bed and in period. They, they, they were into the team, came straight in and, and, struggling in a in a struggling team uh, essentially so do I think they're good players of course I do you know I think they are really good players um, I think they're, they're, they're maybe not benefit, benefiting from the way Liverpool are playing you know and I, I think maybe I mean you'll know it more than anyone the, the fact that you, you look at City and you know City maybe this year are, are hurting from the fact is that to maybe give it so much for the last couple of years. I mean, you know, mentally, you know, that that could be a problem. Um, I think fitness wise, and, and you'll know, Sam, I think players can't play four or five games a week. I mean, I, I would guarantee that could be the case. But from a mental side of it, I mean, it, it's tough. And I think probably players at Man City, players at Liverpool, I think struggle mentally from what they've achieved for the last couple of years. And I, I think that maybe have. A little bit of a, a little bit of a. Well, they've, they've all kept going for four competitions, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Both Liverpool and Manchester City for some for some. Probably only Manchester City had the strength and depth of squad to actually yeah. do that. Like you mean, and, and like you know, I, I had a directive. I got to the owners and the directive and the owners and they said, "I take the stick for this," but you know I mean, Fergie was the best, first one to start rotation. Got hugely, hugely criticised for it. You know, even us old players. Oh, you know, we, we we're not tired. We we were never tired. We were never. You know, we were. Never, you know, when we played, we played. You know, when I played, there was no subs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there, there was only a sixteen man squad at the best. Like I mean, but when you went and, and as the games moved on and as the, the levels of of pressure physically and mentally goes you've got to have this this squad of international players almost like Man City have, and find a way to rotate them that doesn't affect the performances yeah. and that's the beauty of it because if I rotated at Bolton we were rubbish 
if I made five or six changes at Bolton, then lads that came in, wouldn't it, we'd be nowhere near the level we could be. But when you get get the players used to it and they had to get ready and Manchester United had to get ready, Fergie. I was speaking to, you know, Phil Neville and, and before he went to Everton and said, he decided that he's, he got 25 games a year, yeah. 20 games a year. So it wasn't as if he's on the sideline all the time like you are. Mm. If you, do you really want to go for all four competitions? What's the consequences of when it all comes up and the pressure that you're in another semi-final, then a final, another semi-final, then a final. What is your priority? So I asked the club what the priority was. I'd love to win the FA Cup. I'd love to win the Carly Cup. As a manager, I'd love. And they go, Sam, you've got to keep us in the Premier League. Yeah. But what about Klopp? Where's, what do we think about Klopp this season? I mean, I, I I love him. I think he's brilliant. I think yeah. what he what he's done, what he's done to Liverpool, and, and where Liverpool are now to what they were years ago. I mean, we talk statues. That that man should be having a statue there. You know, is he under a little bit of pressure? I mean, he might be under a little bit of pressure from a certain fan base who you know probably don't understand the game um, because it's all about. If you just mentioned it, it is all about winning. Certainly when you when you are a big big club. Uh, but but I think what Jürgen's done and what he's achieved, um, he deserves all the time. He needs to try and get it right. If he loses the Merseyside derby, is there pressure on him? I mean, he'll put pressure on himself because he, he's that ingrained in wanting to win anyway. Um, you can see the pressure on him. Of course. I can anyway. Yeah, no, I, I can see, I can see, you know, you know, I, you know I, 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 I've been the, the bottom of the league, like you mean, where the pressure's at the top. They think that's pressure, like you mean, you know, you know, <laughs> when you're at the bottom of the league and you're doing it, it's a it's a different type of pressure. Um, That's what I was going to ask you then, Sam. League, you know, you know, know what you're mean? saying? You can see it. So there's a different type. Is it is a pressure or is it frustration? I mean, I can. I no, can it's understand. lack of sleep. Yeah, but I can understand with maybe like a, a, a no disrespect to all the other teams, but like a, a, a lesser known team. I mean, managers can become under pressure, but when you're like a, a Man City, a Man United, you know, uh, Liverpool. And you're not playing well, and you're getting beat. It's, there's obviously pressure from an outside point of view, but there's maybe more of a more of a fra- frustration from yourself because you know that the team should be better. Mm-hmm. So you know, th- I think there is a difference. There's a spell. There's a spell where where you're, and, I, and I've only had this once. There's a spell, probably twice, West Ham, um, and Bolton. Is your life so much easier because how good your players are? Like I mean, and yeah. uh, and and so the last three years, four years, Bolton was like, I just had to keep it going and keep an eye on it, and watch, and look, and look for complacency and look for have they got the capabilities of of coping with winning every week? Because you know I've listened to Fergie and, and you know listened to Jose, and it's have you got a player that can cope with it mentally? A lot of players can't cope with winning every week yeah. mentally. So have you got a player oh, wow. that can cope with it mentally? And, he t- and Fergie and, and Jose talked about that, like you mean. So I was always watching like when we're winning, like you I mean, when's it going to stop? And I was going down, down on them, you know, while we were doing all right, not going down yeah. on them when we weren't doing so well. Yeah. So to keep it going, like watching for it, like you I mean. Yeah. And like coaches said to me, Gaffer, don't you think you're a bit harsh? No, I'm, they're going to, yeah. they're going to let us down. They're going to stop. They're going to, you know what I mean? But that's, that spell, that spell was like, it was okay, Gaffer, leave it to us. We'll keep going. Like, I mean, and we don't need to, yeah. we didn't need to do the basics as much. Yeah. Cause it was all, they'd all it's sort of got it, to, got it, the quality of the player and their own intelligence. Allowed allowed you to be a little bit more relaxed as a manager and let them yeah. let them go and express themselves. Sam, can I ask you one more question? Just to revert back yeah. to what you were saying before about obviously playing weak and see. I'm sorry, Nat. I know no, you, I love this. You so pick you, his brain, Robbie. Yeah, so you, you know when you when you talk about maybe playing weak in teams and cup competitions, mm. I, I understand that and I, I totally do because obviously the priority will, will for certain clubs will always be to stay in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. 
But you've just mentioned you were in a semi-final. Yeah. Does, does your mentality not change being in a semi-final? Because you're, you're thinking from a fan point of view and the, the feel-good oh, factor, absolutely. what it brings to the club and what it brings to the fans and, and day one, day out at Wembley or, you know, it, it's... But, but we had the day out at Wembley with Bolton when, the, when we lost to Middlesbrough, which was the biggest disappointment for me. Like I mean, because we'd we'd beaten Aston Villa in the two-legged semi-final. I always remember JJ Akocha was supposed to be in the African Nations Cup, so he he dreamed up some break-in in his house so he could <laughs> stay and play in the first leg. <laughs> and that's how good he was for, with me, you know what I mean? That's the relationship we had. And uh, it, 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 we, a bit, we beat Villa 5-2 and he scored these wonderful goal like the outside of his right foot bent it around the wall and we went to Villa and, and lost to get next game but got through to the final and obviously we'd played the best team from the quarterfinals on because we we or I knew we were safe in the Premier League so I could go first team yeah. let's get to a cup final let's try and win one you know what I mean so, so from that point of view um, it was uh it was all guns blazing. But, you know, prior to that, if we were down here and we were teetering with a rele relegation, then the priority became. Yeah. And of course, it lets you, it, the cup games lets you know what, how good, how strong your squad is. Yeah. Because you, you put them in and they let you down and you go, well, you come, they go, why am I not playing? Why am I not playing? And then you put them in and they come in and you go, you're not going to knock on my door now, are you? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? What's yeah. a reverse? You're going to be knocking yeah. on your door. That's why. That's why. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Pack your bags suddenly off. <laughs> oh, to, to end, I've just got a couple of quick fire questions I'd like to ask you about the Merseyside derby. I'm going to say quick fire because I'd like to get your instant reaction. Okay. No kind of stewing time from the both of you. Just instant reaction. Would any Everton players get in the Liverpool team currently? No. No. Okay. Not for me, no. Both know instantly. I like but that. I like the look of that new lad in midfield, though. Anana. Anana. Yeah, a good player. Okay. Um, so, we'll so, so, is that a yes then, Sam? No, not yet. It's <laughs> too early. <laughs> Next season, ask me. Season, maybe. <laughs> Will Stephen Gerrard ever manage Liverpool? Yes. Okay. I mean, do you want me to elaborate or...? Time frame? What do you think? Uh, I, I think he, he needs to go, obviously go to another club and do well, but I think he's, I think he's good. Yeah, I think potentially, yes. Depends how good he's doing when the job comes up and what club he's at. Okay. If he's not doing as good as he should be, he won't be. If he's doing as well as they'd like him to be, he will be. So, I mean, he's like sat on a fence there and he's yes, like, I mean, I like I, I've said a yes, but I've, I've, I've said the same answer, but I've said yes. So, <laughs> love that. <laughs> and your prediction, Merseyside Derby prediction? Uh, I'm going, oh, it's going to be a tight Liverpool win. It's going to be a real good Everton draw. <laughs> Love that. Love that. <laughs> I managed two draws when I were there, so I was really happy. Do you think they take a draw right now? They're oh, yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah, I, th I think the fact is that they've had a win against Arsenal and obviously leading into this game, I think um, I think the least they'll want is a, is a point, to obviously the way Liverpool are playing as well. But I think Liverpool are due a little bit of a change. Um, I think there'll be a slight little bit of a... Not a formation change, but I think there might be a few little players coming in. So I'm going for a a Liverpool tight, nervy, but boosting win. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and joining us today. Tight and nervy. Tight nervy. Are you going for a tight nervy draw? Yes. No, I'm. It's a frantic game. Okay, frantic. It's going to go. It's going to go end end at some stage. It's going to go end to end at some stage. I think Sean will be a bit a bit cautious in the early stages, but. He'll want to. He'll want to try and put pressure on Liverpool's defence because it's it's been it's been lax recently. Yeah, it has. Sam, thank you as always. Always pleasure. a pleasure to have you, Robbie. Thank you for coming and joining us. No, thank you. Um, sit, feel free to stick around with Sam afterwards, and pleasure. we Thanks will look forward out. to. Uh, you getting your first job and we fingers will crossed, take fingers crossed fingers crossed we will and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill we'll be back next week <laughs>